Good evening. This is your weekly IEP TV News Bulletin broadcasted from Davis Hall. My name is Molly Cunningham. And my name is Daniel Ebeling. We bring stories to you that are relevant to IUP and the Indiana community. President Driscoll and U.S. Representative Glenn Thompson recently announced that IUP has received $500,000 in federal funding. This will help to assist in the demolition of buildings in Punxsutawney and to make ways for IUP's new Academy of Culinary Arts. The project is expected to help create a new learning environment for students, as well as helping to give the necessary tools needed to succeed in their education. Homer Center Quiz Bowl team is to compete in the National Championship Tournament. The team will represent its school tomorrow in Rosemont. This will be Homer Center's first time competing at the National Championship Tournament. May 2nd is the deadline to register to vote for the May primary. Secretary Chapman encouraged Pennsylvanians to use online voter registration as a simple way to ensure their voices are heard. Voters can access this tool in English and Spanish. Now the registration will also be available in traditional Chinese. The Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture is on high alert for the avian flu after the first case in nearly 40 years was found in Lancaster County. The department confirmed the case of the pathogenic avian influenza, or HPAI, in domestic poultry within commercial layer chickens on a farm in East Donegal Township. Creter Farms stated that all 1.4 million chickens have been destroyed and that they are adding extra biosecurity measures to prevent the spread. The White House has recommended that Americans over the age of 60 to get the second coronavirus booster shot. They noticed that the age can cause risk for severe diseases. The White House also noticed that those in the 50 to 59 age range should make a decision to have a second booster after consulting with a doctor. Still related to COVID news, Moderna says that their bivalent vaccine shows to be effective against the new COVID variants. The pharmaceutical company announced on Tuesday that this new vaccine appears to provide stronger, longer lasting protection against other variants of the virus than the original. Dr. Stephanie Bonchell from Moderna said that this new vaccine shows to produce more antibodies for months that can help to neutralize the virus. European airlines are weighing up their mask requirements on flights to the U.S. Starting Monday, mask requirements are no longer required in domestic flights after a Florida federal judge voided the Biden administration's COVID-19 mandate. Airlines like Delta, United, and American welcomed this decision and made it optional for those who continue to wear one. This decision also prompts some international airlines to adapt mask requirements and have it optional as the passengers' travel destinations do not require it. Activists in Greenpeace Italy are taking a stand against Russian oil company Sovconfloat. They did this as a way to urge European governments to stop using fossil fuels by writing peace, not oil, on the side of the company's oil tankers. Greenpeace estimates that since the beginning of the conflicts in Ukraine, European companies have spent more than 33 billion euros or 35.6 billion in U.S. dollars to import gas, oil, and coal from Russia. We'll be back to address how students are coping with finals coming up after this message. The Penn Student Newspapers, where students at IUP and members of the surrounding communities can catch up on the latest news about the weather, sports, culture, politics, and everyday events in Indiana. You can find such news articles on their website, thepenn.org. There you can also view their multimedia page full of videos and skits revolving around current trends on campus. Wanting to advertise your business? The Penn has you covered for that as well with spots in their newspaper and videos. You can access all that and more at thepenn.org. As finals are coming near, students find music as a coping mechanism for their stress. I got to see how IEP students are bringing music into their day-to-day -day lives. Here's the story. Music is something that people use whether for self-expression, to use their own talents, to connect to the world, or find themselves. Morgan Heinbaugh from the English Education Department loves to sing her own music and the music of others. She finds that music will help her through finals. So one thing that I actually like to do is uh, whenever finals comes around every year is um, in between my breaks, I'll put away all my school stuff and then I'll hop on my piano or I'll pick up my guitar and play for a little bit until I feel relaxed enough that I can, you know, pick back up my schoolwork. Not only is singing a part of Heinbaugh's life, but playing the piano and guitar is also something that she enjoys, but is not something that everyone can do. If you cannot sing very well or you don't know how to play an instrument, one thing that I advise you to do is put on some music and have a dance party. Students from different departments have different projects. Also in the English Education Department, Alexandria Hufford has her own challenges to face with finals. Uh, some of the 
projects that we have to do would be lesson plans. It makes you think about your future a little bit. We do research papers, whether it be on like history, uh, our future job, things like that. Music is something that Hufford hopes will get her and others through finals as the stress can become overwhelming. If you can't really play an instrument or you're not really artistic, can't sing, dance, that sort of thing, I advise that you could put some music on, write a book, like something that would describe your life. Whenever I get stressed, I tend to just kind of think, put headphones in and write stories. Although playing instruments and singing is authentic, both Heinbaugh and Hufford find it important to appreciate artists. One way that music really helps with my stress is that whenever I get really overwhelmed, um, I have like mild autism, so if I stick in a little headphones, it really helps with the overstimulation and it calms me down to something that I listen to in the background. Access to music is available to anyone with Wi-Fi or downloaded songs. Spotify and other services even offer a discounted price for students, which Hufford and Heinbaugh both take advantage of. For only the price of $4.99 per month for Spotify Premium, any IUP student can listen to any music ad-free. With all of the stressors in life and in finals, students have used music as a relaxer and have used their own skills while connecting with their daily lives. Music will help students and myself get through finals. From IUP TV News, this is Molly Cunningham. People in the Eberly College of Business have been making progress with the convergence of computer science and MIS programs. Michael Surma has a story. As the spring semester comes to end, IUP students are preparing to graduate. Undergraduates at the Eberly College of Business will receive degrees in business-related fields, including accounting, management, marketing, economics, finance, and Management Information Systems, or MIS. Taylor O'Shea is a senior in MIS. He plans to work for the tech industry. Aside from his studying, he is also the president of AMIS, Association of MIS. The organization focuses on inspiring students what to do when they graduate. Hi, I'm Scott Florence. I'm the treasurer secretary of the AMIS Club. I'm a graduate student in the Business, Computer, and Information Technology program. Hello, my name is Taylor Roger. I'm a current senior undergraduate student studying Management Information Systems and Economics. I am also the current president of the Association for Management Information Systems. I think MIS students definitely have a leg up in an increasing technological world. Learn their spreadsheets, learn Microsoft Word documents. We kind of teach the fundamentals here and then definitely go more in depth especially with like how networks and every business requires a server. We kind of get the basics of that, get a little bit more involved. Under his leadership, Taylor helped Amos host many events, such as guest speakers, resume workshops, and food drives. Amos does a good job of giving students a network of other students who are interested in business and technology and giving them access to alumni and other speakers that we have come in who speak about their experience in the technology industry. I think it's really good for students to just have that exposure. So I think the best benefit for students is especially networking. Meeting with different speakers who come in, you can get the opportunity to network with them, to talk to them about their experiences. Working in different volunteer events that we offer helps you bond with students over a common goal, helps you give back to the environment, give back to the community as well. AMIS is not the only organization. Others, such as American Marketing Association, the Economics Club, and the Student Finance Association also strive for the same goals. It's necessary for students to join organizations because it kind of gets them involved with like-minded individuals who want to share the same experiences, especially because it kind of creates an atmosphere that every student's going to be going towards after they graduate with a work environment, with a personal environment. Their professional lives are going to be centered around those like-minded individuals, people they might not disagree with even, and being part of different organizations kind of helps with that. For Taylor, graduation and leaving an organization can be both exciting and confusing due to the uncertainty. Part of the reason is the fact that the MIS program has been closed. I got the chance to hear a lot of speakers and be around a lot of people 
in the tech industry and get a good idea of the different things that I could get involved with. And I want to get into teaching business and technology classes in high school. And that's something that I found out about through the AMS program. In terms of job searching, everybody who graduates with MIS, our futures look pretty good, especially because there's such a high demand for those in technology industries. Everybody needs an IT worker, everybody needs a server maintenance, everybody needs all those things. Even if you don't want to work directly with those, there's always opportunities for MIS graduates. Since last year, MIS has converged with computer science. The move brings disadvantages for students considering that both programs have a different focus. MIS is more for the business side, while computer science is more programming based. In my time at IUP, all the organizations, all the activities that I participated in have definitely helped me. Well, I recently did an internship solely off the networking, which you hear everybody say, but you don't really see that many people do. Many student organizations have greatly benefited IUP students. Through these organizations, students interact with company representatives that they wouldn't have otherwise. The future is actually looking pretty bleak for MIS and AMIS. Recently, our pro entire program and professors got retrenched and completely dissolved. They're not accepting new students. Current students are being told to drop it to a minor or drop it completely, so that's kind of impacting AMIS especially. Students majoring in MIS will graduate with their intended degrees. Reporting from the Eberly College of Business, I'm Michael Serma for IUP TV News. Coming up is a story about how younger people are making an impression on social media. Stay tuned. The Hub Fitness Center is the go-to place on campus for students to work out. The cardio machines will keep your heart rate pumping. And there is plenty of equipment for strength training of your choice. Our functional training rooms will help you keep your core in shape. From strength training to cardio, this is the place to go to stay fit. With the new generations on the rise, the advancements in technology and social media are growing too. The story talks about how younger people are making their mark on social media. Here is Jacqueline Himes. Many young people are hopping on the train of social media. Through different platforms like TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, it's easy to gain followers by posting videos or pictures to the internet. But some are making a full-time career out of it. Influencer Charlie D'Amelio, who gained her stardom from posting dancing videos on TikTok, is now the most followed on the platform with over 136 million followers, making millions of dollars at a young age of 17. Social media influencers are becoming the mainstream celebrities of our day being invited to huge events like the Met Gala, the Oscars, and the Grammys. I decided to ask my dad, a man who doesn't know much about social media, his thoughts on young influencers having careers at such a young age. With uh, the right mentorship and the right advice, it would be fantastic. Um, it, in my day, they didn't have something like this, but uh, I think uh, the kids with uh, the ambition can um, reach for the stars. There are so many young creators expressing themselves on the internet for fun that they don't even think they could be making a full-time job out of this. That seems to be the dream for many young adults in today's world, not having to work a 9-to-5 and being able to make money while posting videos online with your friends. I asked Samantha Himes, a high school senior, her opinion on kids her age getting paid to do social media. Relatable influencers. So I'd say if someone my age is given the opportunity to be an influencer and make a career out of it, I think if you have the opportunity to take it. So what's your opinion on it all? Young kids making millions to be the faces of social media? I'm Jacqueline Himes reporting for IUP TV News. Some students find themselves working a job on or off campus while also being full-time. Capri McDonald shows us how that's going. Full-time students like Lucy Payne have to work part-time jobs to pay for things important to them. Things like putting themselves through school, paying for car notes, and paying rent for off-campus housing. The amount of full-time undergrad students that work part-time jobs is astonishing. College students need to survive just like everyone else, leaving them to do jobs like serving food, bagging groceries, delivery service, and more. Here we interview Lucy, who is a full-time junior and a part-time delivery driver at the restaurant Romeo's, located on Oakland Avenue, which is right off campus. What I think about being a delivery driver while doing being a full-time student is 
I get to drive around and I think that's better than like just working in the restaurant the whole time and like for like six hours straight, eight hours straight, however long my shift is. And I think I like being able to get out to my car, listening to my music, you know, um, making tips at the end of the night instead of waiting for a payday. Research has shown that students who are working are all working for something important to them. Though it may be exhausting and taking a toll on them, they stay driven. Here we ask Lucy what keeps her going even if she's exhausted. I think the main thing that keeps me motivated to keep doing the delivery driver job is, like I mentioned before, is one, the money, um, getting paid every night at work instead of having to wait because because I'm so busy, I also have a lot of responsibilities, like my car insurance, you know, I am a delivery driver, so, you know, the gas that goes into that. Um, so that's one motivation, but um, I think the other, the other motivation is I kind of like having a job. I like being busy. I know I'm super busy, but, like, when, on days I don't work, I'm like, I should be working right now. A lot of students who work have to worry about things like transportation there, time managing their studying and their homework time, and just scheduling your work shifts around their classes. 63% of undergrads who are enrolled full-time at work a minimum of 30 hours a week or more while attending classes. Here we have Jasmine Russell sharing why she works part-time as a full-time student. Hi, my name is Jasmine Russell. I'm a student here at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. I currently have a part-time job working at McDonald's. Um, the reason being is because, you know, as a student, I would like to, you know, care for myself and have, keep up with myself. I also have bills to pay, um, such as phone bills and rent and just, you know, having necessities. You know, as a female, you need to have necessities and extra spending money um, just to have things to do on the side. So, the next time you see a student worker, ask them why they're doing it and let them know that you appreciate their hard work. I'm Capri McDonald, signing off with IUP TV News. After the break, we'll see some updates on the IUP baseball team and some tips on how to fly drones for those who are interested in learning to fly. Do you have a passion for sports? Do you like watching, discussing, and debating about them? Then the big hit is for you. This is IUP TV's one and only sports show. We cover all sorts of sports such as football, soccer, baseball, and more. You can do sideline interviews with players and coaches or be the person behind the camera capturing all this footage. This year, The Big Hit is teaming up with sports production to get up close and personal with IUP Sports. If you have a passion for sports, The Big Hit is for you. There are people with their heads forever turned skyward. Stoker Wise Oric shows us just how relevant this form of transportation and technology is to humanity. Flight, a goal in the hearts of people who look skyward. And those people are learning how to fly here in Western Pennsylvania. So my future goal that I see is to become a commercial airline pilot. Um, down the road is to fly internationally on big jets, for an example, like Airbus and Boeing. Hamza Samor is a graduate student of IUP. He is working towards environmental engineering and energy management bachelors as well as a master's in business administration. It's been my passion since I was a little kid. I think it's really cool just to discover all these new places around the world, you know. You could say that his head is in the clouds. Hamza is one of many that shares this love for flying. I had the pleasure of working with him and Brian Zeiler at the Arnold Palmer Airport in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Safety is the key. Safety is the number one priority. Being a former ramp agent myself, I can assure you it's a lot more than just waving around wands and moving bags. Our job includes everything under the wings of the $95 million aircraft that carries you around the planet. Some of these tasks include operating machinery, sorting and lifting bags, and marshalling planes into the gate. What if you're not ready to go all in but would like a place to start? Flying drones is another option that won't have to put a big dent in your savings.
of you want to earn money while flying drones, it is required by the Federal Aviation Administration that you pass a proctored aeronautical knowledge test. It is hard and not for everyone. It comes with a fee of $175. But with a safe mindset, consistent studying, and willpower, you can pass with flying colors. After all, some companies like Amazon might need drone pilots for package delivery soon. IUP even offers classes on how to fly unmanned aerial systems. There's always a different perspective you're going to encounter, always a different viewpoint you're going to get. For some, flying is the coolest thing in the world. Humans now have the ability to see places like never before in history. But what if you're new to flying? The first time is always the scary part. But I bet you like almost 99% is that after, after you take your first flight, it's gonna, you're gonna be ending up laughing about it because to be honest, it's probably gonna be one of your most amazing experiences you've ever had. Here is Bailey Noel. Looking into the credentials that it takes pilots to get jobs for your airline, if you're flying a main airline like Delta or United, just know that you've got some top-notch pilots up front and nothing to worry about. According to multiple studies, including one from Harvard University, you are less likely to get into an accident flying rather than riding in a car. So flying can be both safe and fun. It's also a great opportunity to meet new people who care deeply about their job. What would you describe the aviation community as? I would probably say unity. Um, it's just getting people to be connected to other different parts of the world. Unity something much needed in times like these. This is Stoker Wysoric reporting for IUP TV News. The IUP baseball team has a new promising newcomer, freshman Jimmy Tooley. Tori Roper has a story. The IUP baseball team has gotten off to its best start in years, and one major key to the turnaround has been freshman pitcher Jimmy Tooley. As a true freshman, Tooley is sitting as second in the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference among all pitchers with seven wins more than midway through the season. Tooley is one of five starting pitchers in the conference with an undefeated record amongst pitchers that qualify. Competition is great within the team if players can thrive off of it. Tooley believes his success has been predicated upon his teammates pushing him to be dominant. The uh, biggest key to my success is probably the competition between the teammates. I mean... Jay's going out there shoving, Mark's going out there shoving, we got Mark doing complete games, stuff like that. And I mean, that's pushing me. It's like they throw the two games before I do, so I come out that next day and it's like, man, I gotta keep up with these guys. So I go out there and I just try to do what I can to keep up with them and ultimately that's been really successful for me. I've been keeping the ball in zone, just throwing strikes and getting out. So I mean, it's all I could ask is the, uh, the competition between the guys and I hope we keep it up the whole season. Tooley's teammates have been getting a close look at him all season. Junior starting pitcher Mark Eddyburn noticed Tooley's hard work from day one and talks about what is attributed to the freshman's success. I think just since he's gotten here, he's been one of the hardest workers and it's obviously uh, contributed to his success. I think he's 6-0 right now. And that's the best start that I've heard of from anybody coming into college and just making an immediate impact. He gets ahead, he throws strikes, he just commands his own really well and he's picking up things along the way. He's a quick learner, so I'm excited to see what he can do. Tooley picked up his most recent win this past weekend over Pitts Johnstown, only allowing four hits and two runs. He has two very impressive wins this season over ranked opponents Seton Hill and Slippery Rock. In the game versus Slippery Rock, he had his career high eight strikeouts in that one. The Crimson Hawks will look to put their five game win streak to the test this weekend in a four game series with the Mercyhurst Lakers. Tooley will look to continue his dominance when he gets the ball for Game 3 of the series on Saturday. First pitch is 1 p.m. at O&J Doherty Field. I am Toy Roper. This is IUP TV News. The Lively Arts and IUP's music department are hosting a jazz festival on April 23rd from 7 to 9 p.m. 
Tickets can be purchased in the Performing Arts Center lobby. The Unity Ball is celebrating Latino culture on behalf of the IUP Latino Student Organization. This event will take place on April 23rd from 6 to 10 p.m. A leadership award ceremony for students is happening tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. in the Blue Room at Sutton Hall. Come and support your student leaders. Auditions for Measure for Measure are to be held on Monday, April 25th at 7 to 9 p.m. If you think you've got what it takes for a role in this play, join Theater by the Grove in Waller Hall. That's all we have this week. Tune in next week for more content on IUP TV News. My name is Molly Cunningham. And my name is Daniel Ebling. Come back here for more stories like the new locks on some of the IUP dorms and how students are earning their wings. We'll see you next week, Indiana.